Hello everyone, this is Budgies Are Cool, and you're currently watching my tutorial video on how to use vector layers. Now, rather than going all out and explaining it in one go right now, I'll just uh, go th through how I normally use it and just explain things along the way. Now, first of all, we have to make one. A vector layer, I mean. Now, rather than using a uh, making a new layer like that, like we normally do, you just go one to the right and press that button. You'll be able to tell them apart from normal layers because they have their little uh, fountain pen thingies next to the name. We can call this guy Outline because that's what we're going to be using it for. That's what I normally use it for. But now, uh, we can just let that fade out a little bit. Sketch that I did beforehand. So we can see the vector, or the lines that we draw. Now the main difference between uh, the vectors and, or vector layers and normal layers is that this one you can draw lines that are able to be edited after you've already laid them down. I also like to use uh, smoothing or stabilizing, whichever one yours says, just to make it a little uh, easier for Psy to handle, I guess. Now, oops, let's go with black. As you can see, I just did a regular line, and now we can edit that. One of the, or to do that, just go to the edit tool, and from there, it'll tell you about all the different things that you can do to that line. And it'll also show you the shortcuts to do them. So, one thing that I like to do is using Alt, or no, no, Shift. Oh, wait, one thing. I'll turn on the background so we can see these points on here. They're only visible when either you have the Edit tool on, or when you're holding either Shift, Alt, or Control, which are the shortcut keys. Now, if I'm holding Shift, and I drag this end point, which is yellow, you can just kind of deform the entire line as a whole. If you hold control and drag that one point, it'll only affect that point and nothing else. You can also do the same thing with these green points on the inside. Now, uh, and of course, there are all these different things that you can do. Oh, sorry, Alt can delete points. And, or segments also. See, if I delete this point, it'll delete here and here. Or no, just kidding, that was an absolute lie. That'll just delete that uh, anchor point. But if I delete uh, this blue line, in between the points, then that'll disappear and these will be independent. To connect two lines, you can hold Control and Shift and then drag a line between the two points you want to connect, like that. You can also do Control and Shift and drag the blue line and you can make a duplicate. But instead of explaining all of those, you can just look through all of these things because it really just goes over a lot of it, just what I just said. And uh, I guess that's just one of the main things. You can draw a line that you're not happy with and then edit it so you are happy with it. And uh, one thing to know about these anchor points is the more that there are, the more uh, jagged your line will be able to be. So see that one? It has a lot of anchor points just because it needs them in order to be jagged like that. So if you have something like that that you want to smooth out, just delete a bunch of them and it'll automatically smooth out that line. You can also move them and what have you. I never say that. I don't know why I just said that. And now, Control shift and alt you can use that to delete the entire line. And that's pretty useful. So, 
can just do things like that to finish or to have a closed outline so that we can use the magic wand tool later and if you have something like that you can just make the ends of it pretty you can shorten things take out some of the kinks and uh yep vectors are pretty useful but one thing to be aware of is uh it'll make your file pretty big so like actually i tried to do this this is my third attempt at making this video now because uh it was taking up too much oh my gosh sorry what i was just zoned out uh yeah yeah it went into like memory saving mode and changed my color scheme and stuff so i was like oh my gosh so i just let it happen and now i'm on this weird color scheme that makes it look old but you can't see that because i cut it out of the recording screen <laughs> and uh you know i think i'm just gonna put it into fast forward and uh, I'll explain other things that come up when they come up. <laughs> Alright, see you in a bit. Hello again. So, I just thought of something, and it involves vectors, which is great, because that's what we're talking about. Um, okay, one thing that I want to mention is that when you want uh, corners, it's good, or uh, when you want uh, sharper curves, It'll make one if you place your dots close together, like that. But there's also... Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I'll go look for it. Uh, angle toggle. Ah, there it is. Um, holding Control and Alt, and you can make it so that instead of doing an automatic curve, it'll let you have complete angles. So I can just make this whole thing zigzag if I want to, but that's not what I want. But it was worth mentioning. And uh, yep. Another thing that I wanted to mention is. When you want to, I don't know, like shade in small spaces, not necessarily coloring, but uh, like for this guy's face, for example. Oh, well, maybe not him. He doesn't have much. Oh, yeah, his eyebrows. Like normally, I would just kind of go in here and then just, I don't know, shade it in like that, but a lot nicer. <laughs> But with this one, that might not be a good idea because then you're going to have this entire scribble that just remembers forever. So that's one instance where I use uh, regular layers instead. It's also good for, uh, I mean, regular layers are better when you have eyelashes that are longer so or thicker eyelashes. In which case, I would use the normal layer just to make one big blocky line. But I guess you can also do that thing where uh, you make a really thin line and just outlay, outline the edges. Like that, and then like that. Except, you know, not horrible. Connect. Ooh, 
characters and everything. Um, you see how I have this thing and I want to make this nicer, except it's, this isn't an anchor point, right? Because it's not yellow. You can turn it into an anchor point by holding shift and alt and then clicking it. Now it's yellow. And now it's all cool and stuff. You can also make new, um, I guess, green anchor points by just holding control and clicking Let's see, there's another one, there's another one, and there's, oh my gosh, so many, there's just two, but, yeah, I usually don't do that just because it's kind of a hassle, so instead I'll just use the normal layer to do that later, and, uh, ooh, there's another thing, if you have some place in your drawing where you don't want it to taper off like that or maybe you do want to I don't know but somehow you have this little round edge where it's not skinny but you want it to be skinny you can go to the pressure tool and then drag that point to the left to make it taper off and drag it to the right to make it ginormal and uh, yep. Hey, what is that? I don't know why, but sometimes I just click randomly around, and there'll be these anchor points off outside of the actual drawing. And um, ooh, here's one situation where I really like the vector layers, which I already did for the top of his head, but. I wasn't thinking of it at the time, so we'll just go on to her head. So, uh, in regular layers, like there, I normally try to do this either in one go or a bunch of other ones. See, like that one is just terrible. Yeah, that one's good up to a certain point, but I don't. It's just a bunch of control Z's, and that makes me sad. So, instead, we go to the vector layer. Do one thing that's kind of the shape of her head, and then just edit the heck out of it. Yeah. And there, there. We want this part to be somewhat straight, so less anchor points. Move this guy down there. Move this over here. And it's a little bit of work, but if you use it well, then it shouldn't. It should be worth it. And now I'll turn this into an anchor point just because. So I can move that thing without affecting the left part. And she has a flat side of the head. And. Voila! Maybe? Almost. Yeah. Okay! And there's that. Actually, I think I'm gonna make it uh, pointy. Where am I? Edit. Ah ha ha ha! That's why I wasn't working. Okay, so uh, Control and Alt to turn things into corners only works if you're actually in the Edit tool. If you try it in the Pen one, you're just gonna be changing the size of your pen, and that's no good. So, I think that's about all that I could think of in that little bit, so I'll just put it back into fast forward and I'll pause again when I think of something. See you in a bit.
Hi again. So, next part that I'm gonna do is the sign. And for you, that means that you'll be able to learn about the curve, line, and eraser tool. Um, da -da -da. I'll go with the line tool. Um, so what differs here from the regular pen tool is that, as you can see, all I have to do is set points and it just draws the line in between them. And pretty much as simple as that. Now here's one thing notable about the eraser tool is it only... Oh, I guess... It'll erase whatever... Oh, actually, here I'm gonna go zoom in first. Sorry about that. So it'll erase whatever you erase but then if you look up here it looks like a point right now but when I release it automatically gets turned into another one of the end points that it usually has so just keep that in mind it's not like you can't just erase half of the line down the line yeah, you can't erase the width of the line. You can only erase lengths of it. So, uh, I just made it on a different layer so that I wouldn't interfere with the hands and whatnot. And I guess I can take that out already too, even though I haven't drawn it. So, that is the line tool, I'll also use it to uh, make the letters on here, that spells out vector, just for you. And I'll just keep going and then uh, when I get to the C and the O, we can use the curve tool. Which, kind of like the, I don't know, is this spline tool or something in Microsoft Paint? No wait, that's completely different. That one only lets you set three points. Oh no wait, four points? Two points and then you make an S thingy. I don't know, but this one, as you saw what I was doing, I just manually input each uh, anchor point, and that's just essentially what it is. It makes a continuous line, all the same width, and it looks pretty okay after that. Ooh, here's something. If you press Shift and Alt and then drag the line, you can just drag the entire thing. So if I want to move this over here or something, but I don't. So, actually I could do something like, where is it? Duplicate. That over there. This over here. And now it's selected. I don't really know what the whole selecting thing in the vector layer is, but I always go to here and say clear selected points and now it's not red and scary like it was before and that's about it for now I will see you after the fast forwarding Hello everyone for the last time, 
It looks like I'm just about done with this outline business. And, uh, just want to leave you with a couple of, uh, final notes. So, now that we have the entire outline down, we'll want to color, right? And, of course, once you start coloring, pretty much this whole outline stuff is going to be solid. Just, we're not going to be able to change it because then things get complicated and just don't like doing it. And also, we have these, or I have these three uh, vector layers, which kind of makes this file huge, as I said before, and slow and makes my computer start burning and my hands start burning because it's on the computer, and it's just, just a mess everywhere. So, what I like doing here is I go to Layer, and then I select Rasterize. And what this does is it turns it into a regular layer. See? There's no more uh, thingy. Fountain pen there. I can do this with the rest of them too. And voila. Everything is just one. Uh, or everything is just a regular layer now. But even though that makes it so that uh, the entire thing is faster, it means that I can't, uh, all my control, all shift stuff doesn't work anymore because I can't edit my lines. Like a regular outline, it's just a plain old regular stuff again. And um, I think that's about it. I'll show the, the, uh, the entire coloring process right after this. And, uh, but just super duper sped up, just so you can see how this looks when it's done. And, uh, I think that's about it. As far as me talking during this video goes, hope you learned something about vector layers. Thanks for watching my video, and take care.